like to welcome everybody into this morning's webinar where we're going to spend some time talking about using the scheduler inside of our writer. Again, part of a two-part two series of webinars where we're talking about not only configuring but also using the scheduler. So as we start, as we start out <clears throat> the conversation, we're talking about the scheduler inside of our writer, which is up here at the top of our screen. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to launch out into my scheduler. And whenever I talk about the scheduler, I really say that the scheduler has two different views or two different purposes. The first one would be who and when, meaning if we're keeping track of appointments, we want to keep track of, well, who's coming in and when. So the first side of life is just keeping track of all of those appointments. The second piece of the scheduler is keeping track of what and where. And what I mean by that is, you know, what is going on and where in the shop is it going on? And I guess you could even add who, meaning who's going to perform that service to that as well. So again, as we're looking at the system, we're looking, or as we look at the scheduler, when you launch out to the scheduler, what it's going to do is it's going to pick up, it's going to display to you the last view that you were looking at. What I mean by that is, you look at this drop down menu here where it says views. There are four different views. Now, what we call the normal view is the one that's most typically used wherever you're keeping track and or scheduling appointments. It's what we're looking at right now. And then by default, it's the normal view and then it's just a single day. So I'm looking at here is what we're looking at for appointments that are scheduled for today. So as I'm looking at my window, <clears throat> I've got Sandra Abbott, Jerry Bryan is the assigned technician, Bay 5 is the assigned resource. They're gonna drop the vehicle off with us, and oh, by the way, the comment was needs a wheel alignment. So again, you can see on our scheduler as we're looking at the normal, normal view, and we're looking at just a single day, we can see most of the detail that's associated with each of my individual transactions. As we're going to schedule appointments, again, my preferred view, is going to be using what we call the normal view, which is what we're looking at right now. And then if you click on that icon there that says one week, what you'll notice is it adds in columns for starting today and then six days out into the future. As you look at my screen, and I'm gonna stretch it out here, just, just give me a little bit more real estate. Again, what you'll notice is it's kind of a patchwork quilt filling in those appointments over the course. You'll notice Saturday, obviously midday, fairly well booked. We've got some time on Friday afternoon, Thursday mid-morning, and Wednesday in the morning as well. So again, my preference as we're scheduling appointments when I say normal view and one week, most of the time when a customer calls up and wants a new appointment, they're going to want that appointment at some point in time within the next week or so. So very easy for me to look and see, well, here's where I've got little gaps of time that we could fill in. You'll notice Sunday in a slightly different version or setting of grayscale. As we get into the configuration side of the scheduler, there's a way you can tell it that here are the hours that I'm open, as well as here are the days that I'm open. And again, all it's supposed to do is give us a visual cue that we probably don't want to schedule an appoint any appointments for Sunday. I am not planning on being there. However, again, Monday, late Friday, late Saturday, and or again, little pockets here and there that we have available. So when it's time to schedule a new appointment, there's two ways we can go about it. The upper left hand corner there's an icon here that says new APPT. So if I clicked on new appointment, we can put in the customer's last name. In this case, I'll find my friend Dawn Smith, enter 2000 Plymouth Breeze. And it looks like we've got some time for us for her to come in for an oil change tomorrow at about 8 a.m. So we'll go ahead and we'll schedule our day, we'll schedule our time. And by default, the way that the scheduler works is it always blocks out a half an hour's worth of time by default. We can adjust that as we see fit, but that's what we're gonna set up by default. And then when I hit save and close in the upper left-hand corner, then it asks me again, based upon a configurable setting, who would like to send an appointment confirmation email. I'm gonna go ahead and say no to that question. And now you'll see I've got Dawn Smith sitting there at eight o'clock tomorrow morning. So there were really two different ways to schedule an appointment. There's a cheating way as well, meaning this window is dynamic. I can make changes in this window. I can go ahead and start an appointment right from this window. If a customer says, you know what, I'd like to come in at nine o'clock tomorrow. If I just double click on that block at nine o'clock tomorrow, then what I can do is I can go ahead and I can put in my customer. It would help if I typed correctly, but we'll go ahead and we'll put in my customer. We'll go ahead and we'll pick our customer. If we needed to, we could add a new vehicle. So again, if I said, let's go ahead and let's add in our new, 
our new vehicle. And if you're using the VIN lookup, you can go ahead and have it find the VIN. If they've got the license plate for you, go ahead and put in year, make, model, and engine. So we do all of that entry as we're starting a transaction directly from here inside of the scheduler. So now we've got that Ford Taurus that's coming in, and then now I can schedule that appointment. Again, the difference is when you double click on the box, I double clicked on 9 a.m. on Wednesday, it set the time and it set the, it set the date. So therefore, I didn't have to go in and make any modifications. Again, so that's kind of the shortcut, if you will, of clicking on the boxes inside of the window is it'll preset the time and the date. Again, you'll notice that we've gone ahead and we've scheduled that half an hour time frame. If we looked at our appointment window, again, there's our customer, Nolita Jones. Right now we have no technician assigned. We have also not assigned yet a resource. The status is open, meaning we're gonna wait for that appointment to come in. And if I'd like to see a reminder, I could set one for 15 minutes in advance of when it comes in. Now, maybe I wanna see the reminder a day in advance. So I could go to 24 hours or one day or maybe two days. So I could pick up the phone and call and make sure that they don't forget that we had that appointment scheduled. But so you can set a reminder However far enough, far in advance you'd like to for an individual appointment. Down here where it says comments, I wanted to add in the comments for this particular transaction. And in her case, she's coming in for an oil change and she said the brakes are squeaking as well. And we can go ahead and we can put our comments in there. And so then now we've got our comments. Now these, if we start the estimate from, the estimate or the repair order more accurately, from the appointment calendar, or the scheduler, it's going to bring these comments forward. Much as if I said, well, you know what, if we're going to do some break work, then we're going to want to make sure we do our complimentary break evaluation. And once I add that in, it's now got that as my listed jobs that are down there. And oh, by the way, also anytime a customer comes in, we're going to want to do just our courtesy check. We're going to add that one in there as well. Now you'll notice each of those are timed at zero dollars. So therefore it did not extend the amount of the appointment. If I added something that actually carried with it, a labor time. So let's go down and let's throw a wheel alignment in there. And notice half an hour's time associated with that four wheel alignment. When I click on add, it now stretches my appointment from nine to 10 because now we've got an extra half an hour's worth of work based upon what we've designated as we've gone through. So once we go ahead and go to exit out of the appointment, our three options are either save and close, save and print, or save and view history. If you looked at it, save and close is just gonna exit the appointment, leave us in the scheduler, so that now we can continue working our way through the scheduler, go back to our writer, wherever our next task may be. Save and print, what that does is that uses that Zebra oil sticker printer that our writer integrates with. Meaning if you're utilizing our writer, then we have the ability to integrate to a Zebra 2824 TLP Plus sticker printer in order to print oil change stickers. So if I wanted to also print an appointment reminder sticker, so we're gonna stick it in that upper left-hand corner so that they get a little window cling sticker that says, don't forget, come back to Steve's Auto Repair tomorrow at 9 a.m., next week at 9 a.m., next year at 9 a.m. So again, we can do save and print. And again, that'll print that one and a half by two window cling sticker. And the last one is save and view history. Now in this case, we created a brand new vehicle, so not too much purpose of going to save and view history. But if you did use save and view history, what it will do is it will close the appointment and immediately jump over into the history for this customer and this vehicle. So again, for a returning customer, we'll have an opportunity to review what we've done historically for this particular customer and vehicle. So again, three different ways to get out of there. If I clicked on save and close, and now she sits at 9 a.m. on Wednesday, and again, we'll say no to the question of sending that appointment confirmation email. So again, we've got our dynamic scheduler window that lives inside of here. Before we can you know, talk about some of the other views, we can also, again, you know, if we wanted to move things around, you'll notice I can go ahead and slide that down. It's gonna be 9.30 and it asks if we'd like to send that appointment confirmation email. Anytime that you change the date or time of an, of an appointment, it's going to ask, provided, how, provided your configuration settings, to resend that confirmation email unless it's somewhere in the history. Meaning if I was setting that appointment time for, oh, I don't know, an hour ago or so, simply because, well, we had wanted to assign this to a tech and we had forgotten to do so, then it won't prompt me to send as we go through. 
So again, the first piece of using the scheduler is just keeping track of who's coming in and what we're going to do. Now, when Melita Jones shows up, we came back out here in the scheduler and I double clicked on it. At the top, there's the options for either new RO or new estimate. So if we we're gonna start a new estimate for her, then it's gonna ask us to go ahead and verify our mileage. Oops, I'm sorry, it takes us right over to our transaction. I must have the mileage prompt turned off. Where we've got our courtesy check, which I have as part of the Gen 2 functionality set to automatically add to each transaction. Our wheel alignment, as well as, again, we now have a second courtesy check that's in there. Probably take that one away. And then last but not least, our complimentary break evaluation. The way that this works and or behaves is you'll notice that these two jobs have got a big red block to the left-hand side. Again, a configurable setting. This one here where it says free courtesy check has not been put on our scheduler. So if we added on a bunch of other work to this transaction, maybe we were gonna replace the front pads and rotors, we're gonna do CPR on the rear, we're gonna change out the master cylinder, whatever it might be, and then we wanted to put that on the scheduler so we could assign it to our technician. If we click on the scheduler, it's going to take any jobs that are not already assigned to a technician out to the scheduler with it and allow us to again assign a technician and what we call a resource to that particular job. To that end, as I go back up to the scheduler, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change my view. Because again, I said who and what, and then the second part of it would be what's being done, where is it being done, and who is it being done by. Now to do that, we'd probably look at either our technician view and or our resource view. Now when I go to technician view, if I go ahead and I grab my technician view, when I look at that, you'll notice by default, it shows me just a single day with seven columns by individual technicians. If I wanted to assign these jobs, all I have to do is just drag and drop. We're gonna have Andy do that one. We're gonna have Bill work on this vehicle here. We're gonna have this one get assigned to Bob Stevens. This one can go over to Bill Fosterman. And then we're gonna keep slotting these in so we know exactly who. Now I changed the date and or time on those, so therefore it popped me a message box. But so now in theory, I have allocated out all of the work for today. If I looked at tomorrow in unassigned, well, I'm not sure who's gonna do what tomorrow. Probably depends on how much we get through today. So right now we haven't yet assigned them to our technicians. As you look at the legend, you'll notice that, again, there is the box itself, and then there is the bar down the left-hand side. Over the left-hand side, you'll see that each of my technicians is color-coded, so therefore I can easily see, well, I know that I, anything that's in yellow is assigned to me. And if I went back to what we call the normal view, I can see, again, now an easy way to see who's got most of the work assigned to them. At this point, Andy doesn't have much, nor does Bart Smith, today on their agenda. However, certainly Bill and Bob have got a relatively full plate, at least as far as, as, far as that's concerned. So if we go ahead and if we go back to our views at the top and we go back down to my technician view. Again, the box in the center tells me who's gonna do the work. The bar down the left-hand side tells me where. Meaning, if I looked at my resources, this is assigned to bay one. This is assigned to bay three. If I changed my views again and went to my resource view, I could see that, well, I'm double booked in bay one, at least at nine o'clock, because I've now got work from 9.30 to 10 in bay one as well. Everything else lays out relatively easily, but if I said, well, you know what, really can't do both of those in bay one at the same time, and or for its original time frame, there actually was space in bay four or bay five that I could put that in, have them work on that over there. So again, my, tech, my resource view is gonna help me keep control of, well, who's doing what where? Um, and then finally, I went through my views, there is a technician and resource view. Now, depending on how big your monitor is, now this is a little bit of an eye chart. I'm gonna stretch mine out a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. And I can also resize it by sliding this over. Oops, now I've got, uh, so I can go ahead and I can change my, there we go, if I grab the right bar. It makes it a little bit easier to see. But so again, you can see that here's my, resource, here's my technician. So again, four different views that we see up there at the top. As we go through, anytime we hit print, print is going to do print a normal view for however many days are currently being viewed. You'll notice I still have an entire week there. So if I was to click on print, what it's gonna do is it's gonna give me a PDF copy for, in this case, 
I'm going to end up with one, you know, I'm going to have one, just a single page for the current day. But again, it prints it in what we call normal view. And then if I went over and looked at send reminders, again, send reminders is driven by a configurable setting where it's going to look this far out into the future in order to determine exactly what reminders need to get sent to which customers. Again, when we talk configuration a bit later this afternoon, we'll get a little bit more into the send reminder functionality. So again, to recap kind of where we sit, so if I go back into my views and I pick on my normal view, this is gonna help me keep track of who's coming in and when. And then underneath my views, my technician, my resource, and or my technician resource combined window helps me keep track of what's being done by who and where. A couple of other pieces before we leave the scheduler itself, and that is down the left-hand side, if I wanted to see a custom date range. You'll notice I'm just dragging and holding to go ahead and highlight any given day range. And again, it's going to go ahead and it's going to include. So if I didn't want to do one week, I just wanted the next couple of days, I could certainly build a custom date range. I could also go ahead and have it filter. So I said, well, don't show me Andy, Bart, and Bob. Then now what it does is it removes those. Now up front, where we're scheduling the appointments, that's probably not something that we would do. However, if we had a computer out by the bay, then maybe I'd say, well, let's see, this computer is sitting between bay one and bay two. So all this is going to show is the work that's being assigned to bay one and bay two. And oh, by the way, as we're looking at our normal view, if I said, well, let's see, this is also, let's see, let's go to multiple technicians and put them all back in. So again, we can filter down the elements that are associated. Now you'll notice a whole bunch more because I've got a lot that are unassigned, but you'll notice everyone that's got a color down that bar left-hand side is now showing me what's in only bay one and bay two. So again, we can use those left-hand side toolbars in order to apply filter parameters as we go along. One last piece as far as the scheduler is concerned, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get out of the scheduler itself, and I'm gonna jump over into the reporting module because there is that option to print inside of the scheduler. However, as you get into the reporting module, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna bring up our reporting module, and then once we bring that up, It would help if I launched it. So once we bring up the reporting module, underneath other reports, there are a handful of reports that are specifically designated for the scheduler. So as opposed to just printing that kind of screen view through the print, if I said, well, show me the schedule for today, and I could go ahead and I could print up my schedule and what it'll show me is it will show me not only the appointments themselves. So again, here's my status, here's my technician for my appointment schedule, there's my customer, and again, here's any jobs that are associated with it, any comments that were associated, so a much more extensive view of what the individual appointments are in regards to. If you wanted to print one for an individual technician or by resource and or by status, and then last but not least, that appointment reminders that we talked about, when we actually send out those reminders, if I wanted a report of, well, who did we actually send them to? Because it's only sending out email, because I also want to make sure I make phone calls to those people that may not have had an email address on file. The appointment reminders will tell us, here are the customers that we sent those things to. So again, over in reporting underneath other reports is a place where we can get additional reporting in regards to the scheduler. We'll close back out of there, click out of there one last time, and then now back over into our writer.